Hello and welcome to my channel Crafting with Shutter Monkey. I'm Amanda, also known as Shutter Monkey, and this is episode number 28. Now today is Wednesday the 19th of July and it's about 20 to 4. It's quite late on in the afternoon but I thought if I don't video today it's going to be another week before I get around to making a video. I've got quite a busy day, I've got quite a busy few days, sorry, coming up. It's um, I'm helping out at an event run by the SWI, so I may not get this video edited, this recording here. I might not get it edited until Sunday, but at least if I video it today, you'll still see it on Monday, rather than waiting another week or more, because the longer I put things off, the longer it takes me to actually get around to doing them. So, here we are. Um, it's been quite a while since I last recorded an episode. Um, I think it was back in June, wasn't it? It was about five weeks ago, almost five weeks ago. And I feel like I should have lots to catch you up on. I don't really feel like I've that much to show you. But then I always say that, don't I? And I'm here for an hour. So anyway, let's jump right into it, will we? Right, I will start with sock designs. Okay, so... By the time you see this episode, I should probably pop this onto a sock blocker. It looks nice, or doesn't it, on a sock blocker? Or, oh, where's Kevin? Kevin's not made an appearance for a while, has he? Maybe I should look him out at some point today. Um, so this is the Blue Raspberry Socks. And by the time you see this video, it will have been published on Ravelry and Lovecrafts. And I will have the link below. Okay? So this one is the third in a set of six socks that are going to be known as the Curie Collection. And these are all knitted in double knitting weight yarns on 3.25mm needles and they knit up really, really quickly. I'm not a fast knitter. I am... I'm, I'm a thrower. I'm not the fastest knitter on the planet, to be honest, and I can do one of these in about four hours. The second one to go with this, this one's partner... I actually just sat down on a Sunday afternoon to watch some BBC dramas on Netflix and the next thing I knew this sock was finished. They do knit up really quickly. Double knitting weight yarn and the bigger needles will do that, but wouldn't they? All of these socks have been knitted with West Yorkshire Spinners, Bow Peep yarn. Now this is a luxury baby yarn, but it does have a high, con a high nylon content, so... It is quite good for socks. Ideal for just curing in later on in the evening at home. Maybe not so great for under your so uh, for under your boots or under Wellingtons or shoes because they might wear through quite quickly. But I'm intending to keep mine just for at home for wearing at home. Okay, so I felt I felt like I'm telling you all that, and it's not actually you need to know this because you already know it. But I'm trying to remind myself because it's been quite some time. So. The green apple sock has already been published and so has the pink bubblegum. I changed the name of that and nearly said vanilla. And this one, the blue raspberry one, is the next one in the collection. So the fourth one that is coming, I'm popping this onto a wee sock blocker, is this one here. And this is the lemon sherbet sock. Again, a different stitch pattern, just a different texture on the instep and I'm looking for test knitters for this as well. So what I'm going to do is I'll pop a wee link below and if you would like to test knit this for me you'll find more information on the Google form below. This test knit will start on Monday the 31st of July and it will run for two weeks and then after that we'll move on to the Black Cherry and then the final one is Unicorn Tails okay and that'll be them all done. It's taking me a wee bit longer than I originally planned, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. When I had the the pink bubblegum sock test knitted, one of the test knitters used this lovely, lovely yarn. And I'm just going to show you this just now. It's in here. So I've actually started the blue raspberry one. Sorry for any rustling. I've started another one with this yarn. Oh wow, that looks lovely on the screen. It looks really vibrant. Now this yarn is 
called Distilled. And it's a Shetland and Tweed blend um, by World of Wool. And this colourway is called Chaser. They're all kind of whiskey themed colourways. And I think I'm going to buy more of this. This is a 50 gram ball. So I've got two of these and I'll use one for each for each sock. And I'll just keep going till I I'll just keep going on the leg until I run out. But I think I'll buy them more colours and knit some more of these curry collection socks. Because I think they would be nice for the winter, just for when he's working at home, keep his feet warm. But I thought I would show you that, it's lovely. Can you see the wee flakes of colour through that? It looks really pretty on that screen. <laughs> the light's shining on it. Right, pop this out of the way. I've got the, I actually got this and it's a wee pencil case. I found it in WH Smith. It's just a little boxy pencil case that's transparent with a little, little botanical flower print. It's really, really pretty. And it's just a perfect size for a wee pair of socks, isn't it? So there we go. That is all the design news that I've got to share with you today. And I'm just going to pop all these out of the way, okay? Now that I've shown you all the design stuff that I have to share with you this time, let's move on to the knitting section. And I've got something really exciting to show you today. You'll never believe it. But it's finished. Oh wow. I'm going to stand up to show you this. Oh wow. And the back as well, I'll let you see the back. Try and get it all in the shot. I am really, really pleased with how this has turned out. Now, I think it took me about six weeks to knit this jumper. And I'll show you the collar's all sewn down now. It is all stitched down into place. Um, six weeks to knit it. And then I left it for about six weeks before I started sewing it up. And I don't know why I do that. Because I don't mind sewing up once I actually start doing it and get into a rhythm of it, I'm quite happy to do it. There were a lot of ends to weave in. A lot of ends, I should say, not all ends. Because it was an advent calendar, by Castleview Yarns, there are 24 colours through the front, the back and the sleeves. But it's all done now. Now, when I did sit down to start sewing it up, to do a long one sleeve seam, and one side seam, so it was just along here, the bottom of the sleeve and down a side, and weaving in all the ends took me two and a half hours. And then same when I did the neck, the second sleeve, and the second side seam. I didn't time the raglans because I did them not long after I finished knitting the jumper, but it did take me a wee while. I just put it. I don't know why I do it. I really don't. And remember all that stressing out I was doing about adding some of the original, the, there was a 20, no, there was a 100 gram skein sock yarn with this advent calendar and I put a wee bit into the sleeves at three different points and I was really worried about that. I don't know what I was worried about. And even at the top, the colours don't match on the raglan, but it doesn't really matter, does it? It's still lovely. I finished sewing it up on the 1st of July and then I knitted the collar. I had the collar, I picked up all the stitches and knitted that over the weekend. So that was right at the beginning of July. And I said, I'd posted a picture on Instagram and said, right, I can't sew the collar down. I'm going to have to wait till my daughter tries it on to make sure it goes over her head. I've not made it too tight. And the other thing was because it's a double folded over collar, I wanted to make sure that she liked that kind of collar. And she wasn't going to say to me, oh, look, I don't like that. It's quite bulky. Just make it single thickness. And then I would have had to have un un unpicked half of it, ripped it out. And just at the halfway point, I would have then picked the stitches back up and cast off a nice loose cast off. But she liked that collar. And you'll never guess how long it took me. Now, that was the 2nd of July she tried it on. You'll never guess when I finished sewing it up. 
give you a wee minute to just think about that and throw in your guesses. If you're guessing this morning, you are right. Why do I leave things like that? I don't know. But anyway, finished this morning. So what was that? After she tried that on, on the 2nd of July, that's another 17 days it took me to stitch down the collar, sew the collar into place. But it's done now and I'm really, really happy with it. And she likes it. She's delighted with it as well. She's quite, she's got quite a small frame. She's tall. She's only a couple inches smaller than me. She's about five foot eight, but she's only a size six. So, and it looks lovely on her. So I can't wait to gift that to her now. That is that done. Um, what is the pattern? The pattern is the Gar Trail Crew by Tannis Fiber Arts. And it was knitted using an advent calendar by Castleview Yarns. I used the recommended needle sizes for it. And is there anything else I have to tell you? Oh, leftover yarn. So from the 24 skeins, the 24 20 gram mini skeins that came in the advent calendar, this is all I've got left. I don't even think I've got a full 10 grams there. Oh, uh, well, that bit is actually a wee bit from the socks. So, that's all I've got left. And remember, I originally thought I could knit myself a cardigan with that. I had no chance. I would have to mix something else in with it, wouldn't I? But, that's it. All finished. Really delighted with it. And it'll be quite nice to gift it to her and see her wearing it. Um, so, there we go. Finally finished. So, what else have I been working on knit-wise? I haven't touched my triangulum blanket. It is now July and I haven't started. I've, I've got my July colours wound up. I just haven't started them yet. I will get there. I've been busy the past week doing the sock week for Loving Stitches. Natalie from Loving Stitches. I've been taking part in sock week 2023. But before I show you those socks, I'll show you these ones that I did get finished as well. I did show you these last time. Let me just pop these on your sock blocker too. We but we ball rolling away there. So here we go. These ones are finished. I don't know how these are going to look on this sock blocker because I haven't blocked them yet. This is one of the Regia Perfect colorways, and I'll pop the colorway down below. But it just it kind of reminds me of Halloween colors. Now I did originally start another one of these. I'll show you that one too. Now yeah, there we go. This one's there we go. That was the first one that I knitted. I don't think I had any of these finished the last time I videoed. Um but again this is Regia Perfect and knitted on 2.25mm needles. Now this one is a cuff down sock and I started at the cuff 64 stitches, worked to the cuff in a 2 by 2 twisted rib. And then when the colour changes to blue, I've just worked in stock and stitch down to this blue finishes. And then I did two rounds in pink and then I did the shadow wrap heel. Um, I don't really think the shadow wrap heels sit very nicely on the sock blocker. It might be better if I'd actually blocked them first, I suppose. They look quite square, don't they? But they do look nice on your foot, actually. A foot's more 3D though, isn't it? Than these sock blockers. And... Once I did my shadow wrap heel, just another couple of rounds in the pink and then work down to the toe and then a regular toe. Just It's just a rounded toe here at the bottom. Now this has got quite a long leg on. It's longer than I usually put onto a sock. But this was meant to be for me. Tried it on and it was quite tight around the leg. So I was experimenting and that's why I used this other colourway that I had. And what I measured around my own leg and I decided to do a large leg on this one, but the cuff, I've, I've knitted the cuff in an extra large size. So it's 80 stitches that I cast on for this one. As soon as I finished the cuff, I've reduced it to 72 stitches. I've come down here, worked the shadow wrap heel for a large heel. And then once the heel was finished, I worked some gusset decreases just to get it down to the 64 stitches. And I worked the rest of the foot. I've worked all of the, the rest of the foot in 64 stitches and then the toe is just a regular toe. These ones actually fit me quite well and they're really comfortable around the legs. Um, 
They don't look great on here because they're quite wrinkly. It's a large leg on a medium sock blocker, sorry about that. But I'm really pleased with how they turned out. I do have, both of these ones have been knitted. And I've got my shadow wrap heel in there as well. But I'm still working on the second one for the pink version. Now this one here, I can tell you, is... It is colourway 9093 and that is the ball band there. And the other one, the pink version, the colourway is 9094. If it's something that you're interested in having a wee, having a go with them. I, I really like the way they turn out because it's a really nice pattern sock. But you don't have to do anything. It's just a plain vanilla sock that you're knitting and it comes out really pretty. I think if I, if I buy this yarn again, I would try doing it with a a regular um, heel flap and gusset. Because that's the heel, the heel that I like the best. But then again, I haven't tried wearing this one yet. So, well not this one, it'll be the purple one I'll wear. The, the Halloween one. And I don't have much yarn left over. I've got a wee ball of the purple from each. Because you wind it off when you finish doing your toe. You wind off and there's a wee yellow length. So you know where you start your second sock. But I've got some more Halloween colourways in Regia yarn. So I think I'll use these and put them into the, the heel. Have a wee contrasting heel on them. I think it'll work quite well. Right, next up. I'm going to get these socks off of here. So the next thing that I do have finished is some socks that I made for Sock Week 2023. Now this was run by Natalie of Loving Stitches on YouTube or she is a Nitty Natty on Instagram. And there we go. Aren't they pretty? Now this is the Grannies in a Row sock pattern by Jen Yard and there it's there. This is available on Ravelry, that's where I downloaded it from and it's it comes in multiple sizes again for small, medium, large. Now because I just finished my Halloween socks I thought right I'm going to do a large leg so you actually start with these wee granny squares and I think the idea behind these socks is it's scrappy socks. Um, you can use lots of different scraps Lots of different scraps in your granny squares as well. When I looked at this pattern on Ravelry, I really liked the granny squares that were all the same in the middle. And then it was a different colour for the granny squares. So it was just the second round of the granny square you changed, but you kept you kept the centre the same. So I've used the cream colourway for the centre and then I had five mini skeins. Sorry, I had six mini skeins altogether, but five that were various colours. And I've used some of those to make the granny squares. And I made the granny squares for the large size sock. And I also came up to a 3mm hook. I think the pattern calls for a 225, but I am a tight crocheter. So I come up to the 3mm. And it's the tulip etimo hooks that I like to use. So I came up to a 3mm right away. And when I did my first granny square and measured it, I was just slightly over what the, the part of the gauge the pattern was calling for so I just stuck with that because I wanted a nice big leg on my sock and again these don't look too great on these blockers because I've got a medium, I've got the medium foot again and I've got a large leg so you make all your granny squares, you join them together and then you pick up stitches underneath the granny squares and you work like a cuff down sock, you work down the way so, and that's what I did but I've used the one colour all the way down except for my heel and my toe. I've put a wee pop of colour in. Once I finish my toe, you're back up here to the top, the top of the granny squares, pick up stitches and you work your way up. You finish the cuff that way. And again, I have picked up my 72 stitches for a large sock. I've worked my few rounds in stocking stitches as the pattern tells you to do and then I increased to 80 stitches for my cuff and I've done a one by one twisted cuff. And then just the last couple of rows, a wee pop of colour and cast off a nice stretchy cast off. Now I've woven in the ends for the granny squares but I've not woven in the ends for any of my socks, for any of the colours that I've changed. I will do that once I've, once I've got them properly blocked. But I'm quite pleased with them. And the second sock was slightly different. Just pop this on a blocker. 
second sock. So first sock, second sock. Really love how these turned out. Um, they are the lovely, aren't they? It's such a nice pattern, and it's I really enjoy getting a wee bit of crochet into my knitted socks. So my handmade socks, sharing two different crafts, a wee bit of crochet, and the rest is knitted. Really pleased with those. This yarn was from Beehive Yarns, Beth at Beehive Yarns, and this is the Sweet Treats colourway. This was the Christmas Eve cast on box for 2022, and that's me just getting round to using it. Really, really pleased with how these socks turned out. I think the, the yarn and the pattern just go so well together. It was 100 gram main skein, and then there was six 10 gram minis. So there was the red, there was the, the turquoise blue, the pink, there was also the, the light green, the cream that was in the middle, and there was one other one, a darker shade of green. You can see it's slightly darker than this one. And I've not used that one yet. Still sitting here in my wee bag because I bought the wee bags from Cottontail Farm. I think I told you last time that I opened my package and I only had the blue one inside and I had to message the seller and, oh, is the other one coming in a separate package and there'd been a bit of a mix up. But I've got both of them now and it actually arrived really, really quick, quickly. I think it was about a week later, maybe 10 days later. But I love these wee buckets, they are so handy. This one's been holding my 100 gram skein. You can see there's not much of that left over. And this one was holding all my minis to keep me organised with my minis. There's only one in there. But that is all I've got left from my other minis. Because I've knitted another pair of socks with these. I did have about four and a half grams of each colour we left over from the granny. The granny's in a row socks. But let me show you what I cast on next, okay? So after finishing my grannies in a row socks, this is what I cast on next. Aren't they sweet? These are totally inspired by the Crazy Sock Lady and her Sparkle Pop socks. I saw them on, I think it was our latest episode and maybe the one before and I thought I love those socks. And then I had the main colour here. After finishing my granny square socks, I had about 47 grams left over. I started with 107 and I had 47 left over. And then I had about four and a half grams of each of my 10 gram mini skeins left over after doing all my wee pops of colour and my granny squares. And I thought, I wonder if I can do a stripey sock. So there we go. That is sock number one. And... I have knitted, it's actually my squish pattern, I'm using the toe up version and I use the main colour here and then I've changed to the blue, the turquoise blue. Now I've done five stripes of blue and then I've done three stripes of the main colour and back to five stripes of blue. So it's, it's I'm striping it but it's five of, the, five of the contrast and three of the main colour. And then I've done the same with the pink and then when it got time to do my gusset increases, I think it was just after that red yeah it was on the red so there's there's where my foot ends that's where my foot ends and then I've started doing gusset increases in the stripes as well now I think you can see it you can you can see the cream on there I've also got a, a couple of cream stripes in it as well just to get me just by the heel and just above above the, the heel turn but for the heel turn I've just used the main colour and I do have a couple of cream stripes in there as well. And that's where I stopped. I decided to wait there and do the second sock. So I have got the second sock done as well. Oops, dragging my wee yarn ball about. And I've got both of these socks at the same stage. The only difference that I've made is my colour changes are on this side of this one. But when I change colour, it's in the other one. It's just... A personal preference, you don't have to do it that way. If you do end up with a wee jog, you can see there's a wee jog in the colours there. I can wear both of those. I can have them both in the inside of my feet. Or both on the outside if I wanted. Um, and it, that's just the way I like to do it. You don't have to do it that way. But I followed my striping sequence for my Steelac sock pattern, which was five and three. 
That's why I did it that way. I think when Kay did hers, the crazy sort lady did hers, she did four and two, but I've got five and three. When I counted it up, it would just work out that I would get just by that heel turn and I had one more stripe of the cream to go. But I'm really, really pleased with those. And getting the two socks, two pairs of socks from that one kit is great. But then again, I did have 100... I did have 160 grams of yarn, so there was plenty of yarn there. Now, as you can see, I don't have much yarn left over. There is not much left of those colours. I was hoping that if I put my two stripes on each sock, and it only takes about just under two grams, so it was just under a gram on that sock and just under a gram of yarn, which I find quite amazing. Because all these wee bits of leftovers of yarn, if you've only got two grams of this or two and a half grams of that, it would go into a sock, no bother, wouldn't it? So, is that right? No, it's just under a gram for a stripe, sorry. So it's just under two grams per sock. But then again, if you only had one stripe, it would be just under the one gram. Sorry, I'm even confusing myself here. So, that's those ones. And as I say, Totally inspired by the Crazy Sock Ladies Sparkle Pop socks. I just saw them and I thought they are lovely. I wonder if I can use my leftovers for that. So I don't what the plan was get both socks to the same stage and weigh the little mini skeins and see what you've got left. And I actually wondered if I could just do a bit of the leg in the main colour and then maybe do one final stripe of each colour or two two but I don't have enough to do two two rounds each colour. So I don't know how I'm going to finish these, whether I'm just going to work up the leg a wee bit just in this main colour because after doing both of these socks, I started off with 47 grams and after doing both of these socks, I have now only got 23 left over. So I've got about 12, 12 grams I can use in each sock just to work the leg and see how far I get. And I've also got this wee 10 grams of green. I could even pop that in for the cuff, couldn't I? I might do that and that will use up that one as well. So hopefully next time I come on these will be finished. I'll have two finished socks to show you. And I might even show you the granny square ones again, blocked, because they'll be properly blocked and finished off next time. But this has been great. When I did that first sock, I pulled my, I pulled my yarn from the centre of a ball. So it was sitting quite nicely in here and it was fine. But then when I had to do, I started that second sock, I wanted to pull it from the outside of the ball because I didn't want to split this. Not knowing how much yarn I had left over. I didn't want to have two little, two little random balls left over. I would rather have one big bit left over. So I started from the outside of the ball. And all I did was turn it upside down so the centre of the ball was at the bottom. And it's it's not snagged, it's not caught up, it's been great. It just comes out. I guess because the cake's a bit smaller, it's got plenty of room around the outside. But it's been great. And the other thing that I've really, really liked about this yarn here is the speckles are pretty even. Sometimes you buy a speckled yarn and I feel like you maybe get part of the way down a leg or you get onto the second sock and you can see a change in the speckles. I've not really noticed that. There was one sock, it was actually my first one. Where is it? It's still here. And I thought, right, okay, maybe the speckles are slightly paler just in that wee bit there. But all in all, I'm really happy with that speckling. And even on these second socks as well, I'm pretty happy with even how the heels have turned out, the amount of speckling on those as well. And one's coming from the inside and one's from the outside. Because sometimes that it can irritate you a wee bit, doesn't it, when the, the, um, the speckles change. And I was prepared for that because when I was doing these ones here, I thought, right, I'll do both legs and I'll do the, I'll do the, the heels and then I'll do the, both feet. But I forgot all about that. I just carried on after I was, I knitted this leg, done the colour and carried on with the foot and thought, oops, I was supposed to cut my yarn and I didn't. But I still think they look fine. I'm quite pleased with that. Right. Is that all the knitting I have to show you today? I've only got one more thing to show you in the knitting section today. And it's a little baby cardigan that I'm going to be knitting. So this is the pattern here. 
and it's in Stylecraft, Wondersoft DK, and it's pattern number 8117. But this is the pattern. Do you remember last year I was going around teaching all the knitting classes? Oh, there's a competition this year. Anyone that, en anyone that attended the knitting class with me can knit this little cardigan. And I've got to judge the competition. Now, the deadline date for the cardigans is already by. And the cardigans are all at headquarters. They're at SWI headquarters. And I'm going to be picking them up tomorrow when I go over to Lanarkshire. Um... So I'm going to pick them all up, but before I can judge them, I want to knit the pattern myself so I know what to look out for. I, I want all the wee things that they were taught, all the wee hints and tips they were given at the class, how you increase, how you decrease, how you pick up stitches for a button band, all of that kind of stuff. I just want to knit the pattern and then I know exactly what I'm look, looking for before I judge. So I've got some James Seabrett. I just bought this in the local knitting shop. Um, it's the next town over in Irvine. And that's where I go to the gym every... Right now I'm doing it every day. So I picked that up in that shop because they've got lots of nice wee baby yarns and it's got a wee bit of sparkle through it. The only thing is, I think I've got to knit this. It is, it's a size 16, which actually turns out at a size 18. So it's got a wee bit... It's a wee bit bigger. Um, yeah, it's a size 16, which turns out to a size 18. I've got to knit... And I don't even think this is going to fit my baby granddaughter because she's quite big. She's a big healthy baby. She's actually a wee delight. She very rarely cries. Um, but I think I've got to knit this baby cardigan. I've got to do it in the same size that all the competition entries are in. And I don't think it's going to fit her, which is a shame, isn't it? But we'll see. She's only um, nine weeks old. Nine weeks old, but she's in, she's into size three to six month clothes already so she's not a dainty wee thing but then again her mum and dad are tall so she's going to be I think she'll be tall as well she's good at eating good at sleeping and she's quite a happy wee thing that is all the knitting stuff that I've got to show you today so let's move on to the crochet section and I've made a wee bit of progress on my crochet my vintage crochet cardigan the last time I showed you it was just a big long strip and it looked like a blanket. But now I have started the shaping. I should maybe have pinned that closed actually so it didn't fall apart. But here we go. I've got some of the armholes shaping started. So there's my armholes in there. Kickaboo! I've got a wee bit more done in the back than the fronts. Like the the other advent jumper that I was working on, the Castle View Yarns one for my daughter, I put this away. I got to a point in this, where was I? The last time you saw it, I was down there at this wee marker here. I was down here. <coughs> and I'd put little pins in where I was going to put my armholes. I'd marked it off with little pins and left it. And the the reason that I left it was because I had to work out how to do the armhole shaping. My goodness. So it, it lay for about a month and I didn't touch it. And then I looked it out. Now I'd already put the wee safety pins in, the wee light bulb markers, where I wanted the armholes to be. So I knew where the, the, the first front started and ended. I knew where the back was supposed to be. And I knew where the second side was going to be because it was all marked out. But because I had to think about it and it wasn't even working out how you do shaping because I know how to do shaping and crochet, just decreasing for, to get your, your the shape of your armhole. But because I had to think about it and I couldn't just like, get on with the crocheting, it sat and it sat for a month, which is just ridiculous. And then I finally looked it back out. I think I worked on the jumper and I got that all sewn up. And I thought, right, this is ridiculous. Go look at that other advent project you've got. We need to do these armholes. And that's when I realised that it wasn't going to be long enough. So I added a wee bit more length in. You can see it better from this side. So there's my wee safety pins down here. Just under the purple row. And you can see much more length I put into it before I did actually start the armhole shapings. And that is going to be a better length for me. 
I tried to work it out according to the pattern, <clears throat> but the pattern's quite cropped and I don't want a cropped cardigan. A cropped cardigan wouldn't suit me, to be honest. So I've added, I've added that little bit more length in and hopefully the way it will work out, I'll have two, two repeats each colour. I'll have one, one repeat of everything because it starts down here at the purple and then the purple starts again here and I should get to another round of each colour before I'm at my shoulders. And the way I've done it is I, I did all my armhole shaping. I just sat and did it over a couple of days. So there's no excuses. So now I need to go on with it. I've done a wee bit more work on the back. That's a wee bit higher, but there is no more shaping. No, that's not true. There's a wee bit of shaping on the neck. But what I thought I would do is I'll finish the back and then I can check the length is okay on it. And then I'll get the same length on the front and it's just a wee bit of neck. Where the neckline is, the neck band. There's a wee bit of shaping on the fronts. But I'll do both of them at the same time and then there's no excuses, no mix-ups, hopefully. And that is how that is looking. I'm really pleased with it. It really does look like a, a garment now rather than just a blanket. But one thing that I'm going to have to address is all the ends. Look at this. Can you see all of those? And that's at both ends. Both ends are like this. And then obviously you go onto the backs and the fronts and look at all the ends. Because how long is that going to lie waiting for those ends to be sewn in? It could be another two years that it lies. So I'm going to have to do something about that. I don't know if I would prefer to pick up, and maybe you, maybe you could give me a wee bit of advice on this. Along this front edge here, I don't know if I would prefer to pick up and crochet my button band before I start weaving in ends. Um, I'm going to weave the ends back along this way, along the cardigan, along the crochet, the trebles along that way anyway, but is it better to wait until I've done the, the button band? Picking up, I've, I very rarely do crochet garments, so I don't have a lot of experience doing it, and I think if I was doing a, if I was doing it knitting, if it was a knitted cardigan and I was picking up stitches along the edge like this, I would do my button band and then I would weave in my ends. So if anybody has any experience of that, maybe maybe you could share with me the best way to do it. But I might do that. I might do my button bands first and then I need to start weaving in the ends. And what I thought I could do, you know how a lot of knitters do 30 minutes a day? They just look out maybe a sock project or a blanket or something and they just work in it for 30 minutes a day. I think I should work on weaving in ends for 30 minutes a day. So see, even if it is a case of I get the button bands done on this, get the back and the fronts finished, do the button bands and then just sit it somewhere in 30 minutes a day because see the number of things that I've got that just need ends woven in. It would help me finish some of those whips, wouldn't it? Get into a habit of doing that. Anyway, enough talk about this cardigan. So I'll quickly run over the pattern. It is... It was in a issue of... Simply Crochet, I always go to see Simply Knitting, Simply Crochet and let me get you a bigger picture so you can see it better, there it is there. It's not that cropped looking on that model but when I did it the length that the pattern told me it was going to be, it was a way up above my waist but I'm quite tall, I'm 5 foot 10 so, and I usually do add a few inches in, in length onto the body of any garment that I'm making. So, I've just added a wee bit more again. But, that's the pattern there. And it was in Simply Crochet. Who, oh, sorry, who, who is the designer? Did I ever tell you that? Fran Morgan. Her name is Fran Morgan. But you can also download this on Ravelry as well. And the yarn that I am using for this is, da -da, it's in my box. I didn't need it for the other advent jumper anymore, so it's been moved over. 
looks lovely in there, doesn't it? I do like an advent calendar in a see-through box. Stop the light shining on it. But there we go, that's what I've got left each of the colours. And this was an advent calendar by Vicky Brown Designs. And this was from 2021. And it was A Midsummer's Night Dream was the theme. I'll get it eventually. But, now see if I've got lots of leftovers for this. Just think of the stripy socks I could make. Sorry, it's not just that advent calendar I've used. I've also used a cone of yarn. And it's the four ply anti tickle from Kinko. So I've been using that as well. And I'll link it below. I'll put me a link below and you can check my Ravelry page if you're wanting any more details about that pattern. And you would also be able to find the pattern yourself. The issue is simply crochet or just find where you can download the pattern from. The only other crochet item that I've been working on is my Nefertiti Dolly by Toft. Now I started this on the 15th of August last year and I showed you it in my whip parade. I'm trying to see if I've got a wee photograph of her because I don't I don't tend to print off the all the pages when I'm printing off patterns. Right. I'll see where you can see that. But she is here. And I'd only done the collar, sorry, I'd only crocheted the collar because you need to do a little collar first. And then what you do is you need to do her body and her head. And before you finish the head, you need to pop her collar on. Because the collar won't go on once, she's, once her body's made. Now, I knew this had been lying for a while, but I didn't realise how long. I mean, this is July, and it, I started it last August, and I only worked on it two days. So I looked it out one day last week, and I only... See from that wee pin there, this wee light bulb stitch marker? That's where I was, and that's what I got done in an hour. I just set a timer on my phone and started crocheting, and I'm not a fast crocheter, but that's how far I got in the hour. So... Once I'm ready to get stuff her head, I will get that collar on and keep the collar in place. But an hour a day, and it wouldn't she wouldn't be that long in getting done. It's my birthday next month, and I've asked for the Toft Statue of Liberty pattern. I know you're probably thinking, why are you buying more kits when all the whips that you've got, and especially the number of crochet things? But I just said I wanted it. I didn't actually buy it. I'm absolved. So I need to get this one finished. I would like, well, I don't need to. I would like to have this one finished so I can start the Statue of Liberty doll as soon as I get it for my birthday next month. It's a big birthday next month. But there we go. She will look like that. You can see she's starting to look a wee bit like Nefertiti already, isn't she? Let's move on to the patchwork and quilting section and I've only got one project to show you in this section so I'll not hold you up for too much longer. A couple of years ago there was a quilt released, a quilt pattern released by Fat Quarter Shop. It was a mystery stitch along and I think they actually released a cross stitch pattern that matched this quilt pattern. I'll quickly show you the quilt. Golly, it looks lovely on there. Now, this was, I think it was two years ago. So that's 2021. And I made these blocks as soon as they released the patterns, I made it. I made the blocks, I made the bats, then I made the pumpkins, then that centrepiece. And the only change I made to this quilt was because I had a lot of leftovers, I made this wee edging for it. And as you can see, it's been beautifully quilted. No, it's not. I've still to quilt it. But... Fat Quarter Shop released another free Halloween quilt along pattern, sorry, another free stitch along pattern last year, which was quite nice. 
I quite like that one as well, but I didn't start that one. But they've got another one for this year. It's Haunted Halloween, this one is called. And it got me thinking about this one. And I really need to get this finished. Now I have the backing for this. I have the binding for it. I just have to lay it up and quilt it. I've even got the wadding for it, cut to size. So I need to get it done. And as well as having this to lay it up and quilt, I had lots and lots and lots of leftovers. This is what I've got left over, even after making extra blocks. So I had this idea that I would quite like a Halloween bag to put my socks in, my sock projects in. So I looked out that bundle of scraps and I made myself a couple of extra blocks. What I wanted was a bat and a pumpkin. And the plan was you'd put one in the back of the bag and one in the front of the bag and just make a little drawstring bag. Now it turned out that I had enough fabric to make two pumpkins and two bats. Now I didn't see, th see that pattern when it came out and the, the, there was a list of fabric requirements. I didn't buy the full fabric that I needed. I actually cut some of it down. Because one of the lengths you were to buy seven eighths of a yard and I bought a fat quarter and so I didn't even buy what I was supposed to buy. I did cut the volumes down and I've still got this wee bundle here with lots of wee bits of leftovers. I don't have a lot of white left over, that was the only thing and I've still got some half square triangles and things. Um, I do have a nice purple for the back, wait I'll show you the backing. Now, this is for the back. I thought that nice pop of colour at the back because it's black and orange. Nice pop of colour. It's the same fabric range. All of this fabric here, it's all from the Ghosts and Ghoulies range by Moda Fabrics. And it's, that purple is from the same range that I've made the quilt top from. But I just thought a wee pop of colour in the back would be quite nice. So I'm going to have plenty of that left over as well, because I, I, I bought two metres, a metre and a half, it's a metre and a half I think I've got. I bought a metre and a half to back my quilt and what I thought was I could have some of that in my bag as well. So now I don't know what to do with them because I've got plenty of that purple I could put into a bag. I could even put some of my other, my other scraps in and I could make piano keys just down the side along the bottom and back up the side, make a nice drawstring bag. Or do I make a table runner because I've got two of each block, so I've got four blocks here. So I don't really know what to do with them. I spent all this time remaking blocks and cutting fabric and making sure I had enough and measuring it and cutting work and get another one out of that. And now I'm like, I don't know what to do. Because what am I going to do with two random blocks, one each? Maybe I could make cushions. Give them to the kids, couldn't I? The grandkids. A couple of wee cushions. Because I'm thinking, would I use a Halloween themed table runner? Probably not. Hmm. I don't know what to do with it. I'll maybe try making a bag. That was the plan. Make a nice drawstring bag and it would be Halloween themed. And use up some of your leftovers. And I've still got leftovers. Urgh. Trying to clean out. The reason I'm trying to use up all of this fabric here and get this quilting done is to justify that I bought more fabric to make this year's quilt. I'm going to pop a wee picture here and let you see the finished quilt and this is the fabric that I've bought. This is, so there's this one here. Pumpkins. This is all by, let me just, Art Gallery Fabrics. And this is the newest range. Now this confused me a wee bit because I saw it online and it was called Sweet Sweet and Spooky. And then I saw some places calling it Sweet and Spookier. And I'm like, oh, right, am I searching for the wrong name? And then I saw Spooky and Sweet. And I was getting really confused and I had to go to the Art Gallery Fabrics website and I realised that it was three different Halloween ranges that they'd released the previous three years, so that was 19... no, 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 
No, so that was 2020, 2021 and 2022. So there's a few different fabrics and they all complement one another. So it doesn't matter if you've bought it from the first range or the second range or the third range, they will all go together. And I managed to get some of this one. I think I might have enough if I patch this one up for a backing. It's just so cute. And then this year's range has got the ghosts and some pumpkins sweeties that's just spider webs on flowers and some more pumpkins it's really cute isn't it but before I start this one I've told myself I need to finish that one it's been lying for two years you should just have had it done I haven't ever showed you that, have I? My quilting whips. It could be another video. Anyway, they're all lovely and they all go together. And I think it'll be really nice. So if I use the ghosts for the big house, and then if I use... I might use the pumpkins for the cat as well. And then the bat, I will use... Probably use the wee sweetie. The sweetie fabric, that one there, for the bat. But, oh... Uh, it's so pretty and it's a nice, it's a nice feel to this fabric. It's not regular, it's not your regular quilting weight. It's really fine. It's an organic cotton and it's quite fine. Not as fine as Liberty Tan alone, but it is, it's really nice. So, I seem to be in a Halloween theme, don't I? I'm trying to finish that Halloween quilt and knitting Halloween socks. And I've bought more fat, and that's really all I've purchased. I haven't been buying yarn. It was just fat quarter shop. It came up on YouTube, and I thought, oh, that's lovely. I could make another Halloween quilt. It's really quite nice that they publish these patterns, and you can actually get YouTube tutorials for every block as well. They work. They they provide the tutorial to work you through step by step and show you how to make it as well. It's good if you're a beginner, isn't it? And that is all I've got to share with you today. Um. And as I say, for five weeks, it's not much, is it? I don't know where my head is these days. I don't seem to be able to focus on one thing at a time. I feel like I'm jumping all over like a, like a butterfly, jumping from here to there. And then the number of things that I'm leaving unfinished and adding to my whip pile, just for silly reasons. So I think I'm going to have to try focusing on 30 minutes or an hour a day working on my projects because I'm even struggling to keep up with housework and stuff like that as well and getting the garden done. You should see the weeds in my back and front garden. So I need to get myself sorted out, get more organised, get more of a, a routine and a schedule going. But over the next three days, I am going to Lanarkshire. There is an event with the SWI. It is an event that's not been held to September, actually. It's conference and there is a big um, handcraft competition and institutes from all over Scotland have entered and we have 53 entries. Now it's a group entry, each entry is a group entry so there is five entries in each group and it takes quite a bit of time to set all these entries up and judge them and put them out in display and let the public see them and at conference in September members of the public aren't allowed in to see this this say, handcraft competition so what some of the conveners decided to do was it was to be judged in July the competition was being judged in July and it won't be shown until September at conference but what they'd, they'd spoken to the, the conveners spoke to headquarters and they have organised that we're going to do the judging in July which is this Friday and they are going to set it all up on Thursday do the judging on Friday and then the public can come and see it on Saturday. So it's going to be three days. I'm going to be quite busy there because I'm helping with the setting up and on the day it's open to the public, I'll be helping doing the judging as well. And then we have to take it all back down, pack it all back up so it can get transported back to either headquarters or it'll be stored somewhere until conference in September. Because if you want to go to conference, it's £35 to get in for the day. So you don't, if you're not going to conference, you really don't want to be paying £35 just to come in and see a competition. 
but I'm expecting some of the entries to be stunning because it's crafters from all over Scotland that's producing these items and the theme is Christmas so it'll be quite colourful as well. So that is all I've got to share with you today and hopefully I'll see you again soon. Take care until then. Bye.